we've talked a little bit about symbiosis. Some of you have heard the term before. Who knows what symbiosis means? What does symbiosis mean? When, um, when both parties benefit from each other. That's part of it. Like, I, you scratch my back, I'll scratch yours. Yeah. Right? No. Symbiosis is when, when two different species benefit each other in different ways. It's yeah. got to be different ways. So if we're both scratching each other's back, that's not symbiotic. I mean, we might call that symbiotic, but it's... So I was going to give the example of like a rhino and a bird that eats the bugs off the rhino. Right. Yeah. You'll, in fact, you'll see uh, in lots of places, you'll see horses, cattle, they're birds that follow them around. Mm -hmm. they're, they're eating, the, some of them are eating the birds off of the, the livestock, the animals. Sometimes they're eating the, bird, the insects out of their poop, whatever, but they're hanging around. Um, you know, the cattle are, are being cleaned of insects and the birds are getting fed, right? So there's interesting things. Now we've talked about pollen. We talked about, uh, we talked about nectar recently. We were talking about hummingbirds. We was talking about nectar, right? Remember, nectar is this sweet substance that flowers produce. Now, do you think flowers produce nectar because they're kind and generous and they want to help the, the hummingbirds? and the butterflies and the bees and wasps. Why do you think they produce nectar? They want to attract them. They want to, why do they want to attract them? So that they can pollinate. That's right. So the way they work, how many of you have noticed the trumpet flowers at the end of the pool over there? By the way, those are night blooming flowers, which means they put out perfume only at night. Mm -hmm. uh, night blooming flowers oh, yeah, not are not flowers not. who have realized there's too much competition during the day and there are night pollinators like moths and bats, etc. So they put out perfume. They're usually white or very light colored to reflect moonlight. And they usually only put out perfume at night. And so their, their objective is to attract pollinators when other flowers are harder for pollinators to find. Okay? So there's a, a trumpet shaped flower. In the base of that flower is the nectary. All the way at the bottom, at the top, these flowers face down, right? Those are called angel's trumpets. This is a devil's trumpet that faces up. Mm -hmm. um, the angel's trumpet up here at the, at the bottom of the flower, which is the top, is where the nectar is. So the pollinator goes in there to get to the nectar, because that's food. It's basically a sugary substance with lots of calories. And what happens is there are... Anthers, anthers I think they're called, that hold the pollen up in the middle of the flower. So if you look into the flower, you'll often see these, these anthers there. You can see them with the orchids. And that's where the pollen is. In order to get to the nectar, their face, their belly, their chest, their feet, something has to get into that pollen. Or they can't get to the nectar. They have to get past the pollen to get to the nectar. When they go to the next flower, they're trading pollen from one flower to the next, they're exchanging it. And so they're, they're not purposely pollinating, but they're doing it by accident. Symbiotic relationship, right? The, the flowers are getting pollinized, and the pollinators getting fed at the same time. That's what, you know, it's, the pollinators are not going, man, those, those, those poor mango trees aren't gonna be able to make any mangoes unless I go pollinate them. I think I'll go work real hard and help them out. They're not doing that. Okay, they're getting fed for their efforts. They're getting paid in nectar. That's the way it works. But there's a plant that has a nectary that is nowhere close to the flower. Why would it do that? What would be the point of that? The stems of this plant are hollow and they're openings. And ants make their home inside the stems and they eat the nectar. And they're not pollinating anything because it's nowhere near the flower. Why would the, st why would the plant do that? Why would the plant go to the trouble of, of at least feeding them? It's, maybe it's not purposely housing them, but it looks like it is. It's providing room and board to these ants. Why? Well, let me ask you a question. If you were the ant who was getting free room and board, what do you think you might do when other insects came along that saw that plant 
as potential food. You eat them. You, you might defend the plant, and that's what happens. These ants defend the plant, and the plants feed and house them. That's pretty cool, right? Hey, thanks for watching. If you're interested in more information about fasting in general, we've got a playlist there. If you're interested in fasting for specific conditions, you can check out that list. If you want to hear what people experience was in their own words, we've got a group there. And then we've got another one, which is all about optimal diet, how to maximize your health.